Here is uh, the second part of the design tips for machine learning video. We will focus at first on the futures, extremely important for machine learning projects. And we will see later how to evaluate the performance of the machine learning model built so far. We will see also some additional information that may be useful for you when starting your design project. Let's focus our attention to the selection of the features for a machine learning model, in particular the decision tree. Why is it so important? Why don't we just take all the possible available features? Basically, there are three main reasons. The first reason is an hardware limitation of edge AI devices. In this case, for example, we may have a maximum number of features that we may use for the MEMS MLC. The second point is the possible overfitting that we may see later in details. Basically, when we build up a machine learning model that is more complex than what required. The third point is that uh, many times it may happen that by decreasing the number of futures, we may achieve better performance. Let's see how to discriminate the futures from a practical example. A first approach is to check the data in the time domain. In this example, we want to discriminate if a people is walking or not, leveraging on the raw data from an accelerometer. Just looking at the plot, it's evident that the variance of the signal is a key feature that we will use in order to classify. Let's continue with two examples, always leveraging on the data coming from an accelerometer. In the example on the left, we want to understand a head gesture. So we will select features that are orientation dependent. For example, the minimum and maximum value of the accelerometer on in a particular axis like X or Y. In the example on the right, vice versa, we want to be orientation independent. In fact, we want to understand if the power drill is tightening or untightening the screw independently from the orientation of the power drill. So we will select different features orientation independent this time, like the peak value, uh, or the energy value of the norm of the x, y, z axis of the accelerometer. In general, it's extremely useful to plot the futures on a 1D or 2D axis. This will help us later to select the futures that we will use for our machine learning model. In this example, we can see clearly that uh, when plotting uh, specific futures, uh, we can separate uh, easily different classes. Separation means uh, that uh, the futures uh, that, are, that have been plotted uh, are bringing uh, information to the machine learning model. There is a further method to discriminate the most informative futures by plotting uh, the so-called covariance matrix. Looking at this plot, we can see the correlation between different futures. If two futures have a linear correlation, it means that they are bringing the same content of information. So later, we can just drop one of them. Also, major machine learning tools and libraries like RapidMiner, Weka, MATLAB and Python are selecting automatically the most informative features 
using uh, uh, some specific uh, uh, training algorithm. In any case, uh, usually it's better uh, to manually pre-select uh, the most informative features uh, as uh, we have seen before. Once the machine learning model has been trained on a specific dataset, let's see how to evaluate the performance of it. One very used KPI is the accuracy of the model that needs to be calculated on the test dataset. A common mistake by AI beginners is in fact to calculate the accuracy on the training dataset that is not correct, as we have seen already in the first video. Another important KPI used many times by AI engineers is the F1 score. You can see here some details about the formula to calculate it. Another important step to evaluate the performance of a machine learning model is to look at the so-called confusion matrix. On the horizontal axis we have the predictions given by the machine learning model. On the vertical axis we have the true values got from the labels of the dataset. The current predictions are on the diagonal. We can see easily if a specific class is correctly recognized or if uh, is uh, wrongly confused with another one. The most important analysis when evaluating the performance of a machine learning model is to check about the underfitting and overfitting possible issues. In an underfitting situation, we have poor accuracy in both training and test dataset. In this case, it means that the uh, model is not able to identify uh, the patterns present in the data given. So we may solve the situation by increasing the complexity of the machine learning model. Vice versa, in an overfitting situation, we may have a, a good accuracy in the, the training dataset and the poor accuracy in the test dataset. It means that the model is not able to generalize enough and is recognized as a pattern some noise or outliers present in the training dataset. In this case, we may have a different strategy. We can decrease the complexity of the machine learning model, or we can increase the overall amount of data in the training dataset. One methodology uh, to solve the overfitting issue specific of the decision tree model is the so-called pruning. In fact, uh, we can decrease the complexity of uh, a decision tree model by pruning the branches that we think are not relevant. We can select them, for example, by checking the branches that are used only a few times. We need to check when we want to stop the, this pruning process by checking the accuracy on the training and the test dataset. Thanks for staying with me for such a long journey, covering all the design tips for a machine learning model. Just a few additional information that I think that may be useful before concluding this video. You may find in machine learning tools and libraries different names of decision tree. Actually, the decision tree structure and uh, the way to design it uh, is uh, the same as we have seen uh, before. The different uh, names uh, refer to different algorithms that are used 
to generate the decision tree starting from the given data set. There is also another popular machine learning model called Random Forest. This is done by a collection of decision trees, slightly different each other, and built starting from the same data set. The result of the model is given looking at the majority of the results given by each decision tree. The random forest may help in overfitting issues, since it's a kind of average of different models, so it's more robust. If you are interested in it, you can still use the MEMS MLC. In fact, with this MLC, you can run up to eight decision trees and you can build a random forest model with the help of an external microcontroller. Thank you very much for your attention. If you want to refer more in details to the topics covered in these two videos, you can refer to our document DT0139 or to our webpage of MEMS Sensors Ecosystem for machine learning. Enjoy your next machine learning design and see you soon.